The opening title of Vesper, a dystopian fairy tale about a 13-year-old girl who wants more than she's been trained to expect, declares that an ecological calamity has sent the planet into the new dark ages. The intriguing main character Vesper, Raffaella Chapman, scavenges for seeds to create her own food, for energy sources to keep her frail father alive, and for love, to replace her absent mother. Even though she has limited chances in each of these three areas, she persists in foraging, trying new things, and haggling to get what she needs. For the sake of herself and her father, Vesper must go above what is expected of her. The co-writers slash co-directors of Vesper, Christina Buzide and Bruno Samper, Vanishing Waves, successfully represent a pivotal moment in the life of their lone protagonist, Vesper, when she realizes that the earth beneath her feet probably won't ever stop moving. In contrast to many prefabricated coming-of-age tales, Vesper emphasizes realistic growing pains rather than token empowerment and cliched assurances. Vesper is one of the few science fiction films that works best when the tone and story are more strange than comforting and almost ludicrous than cathartic. Thanks to its fantastical production design and storyboard perfect mise-en-scene, it is also lovely and dreamlike. These innately endearing elements render some clumsily crafted plot turns and baldly stated dialogue considerably less significant than the film's overall depiction of adolescence in the wake of an environmental calamity. Buzide and Samper swiftly established the chilly nature of Vesper's hierarchy-bound universe in a few early scenes. She quickly learns that her father Darius, Richard Brake, who is bedridden, needs more electricity to survive. As a result, Vesper contacts Jonas, Eddie Marson, the brutal leader of a cult-like facility that exchanges sex, blood, and other bodily fluids for things like food, housing, and authority. Vesper informs Jonas that she doesn't want to become a breeder like some of the other ladies in his organization because the conditions of his assistance are too strict. Sadly, Vesper is aware that the restrictions are too strict. He mocks her without correcting her, though, Vesper receives a warning from Jonas not to get her hopes up about changing her precarious position in life. He tells her, you think you're superior than everyone else. Unfortunately, Vesper is reminded by others that she lives in an unwelcoming world and should reduce her expectations. This includes people besides Jonas. You don't know the price of dreams, Darius tells Vesper through a robot that follows Vesper about doing her daily chores. Though both men evidently desire to safeguard Vesper for different reasons, the warning's menacing connotations are obvious and reasonable. Although Vesper does not trust Jonas, it is understandable why she could be enticed. Vesper encounters Camellia, Rosie McEwen, a strange exile from the elite upper-class Citadel living community, and finds some solace in her presence. Like Jonas' society, the Citadels control their resources and keep pale, synthetically created humanoid jugs as indentured servants. Vesper still fantasizes of living in a Citadel because, well, why not? She develops a link with Camellia, and sometimes those bonds cannot be described by trite romantic or faux familial gestures. In one moment, Vesper asks Camellia what the sounds of various animals are, and the two women start to howl like wolves. After Camellia has stopped, Vesper continues to make noise for a few awkward and impossibly lengthy seconds. Being a survivor, Vesper's behaviors and relationships demonstrate her emotional brittleness, pragmatic cynicism, and persistent innocence. Any conversation has the potential to turn violent at any time. In a world where the only remaining humans are surrounded by parasitic or deadly fauna, that makes a lot of sense. Everyone utilizes everything which gives Marson's unrepentant manipulator the distinct ability to be both a compelling antagonist and a seductive voice of reason. He represents humanity in a setting that is both blatantly hostile and somehow alluring. With its superbly realized wardrobe, sound, and production design as well as some cleverly implemented, cronenberg icky creature and special effects, Vesper captures the interest of spectators. However, the unflinching portrayal of cruel individuals who are both products of and active participants in their environment makes Boozite and Samper's film even more stunning. Even Vesper makes the necessary efforts to move into an uncertain and frequently bleak-looking future. Boozite and Stamper's typically vast vision is often constrained by a sizable number of computer-animated images. True, a lot of scenarios are logically pre-visualized, so they are never too complicated by a lot of camera setups or motions. However, the focus on human performances and characterizations overall gives this speculative drama a very realistic feel. Vesper doesn't just ask spectators to cheer for another helpless case as she battles challenging living circumstances. Instead, it asks us to spend time with a young protagonist who believes she is about to make a breakthrough and causes us to worry that she might be mistaken repeatedly. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content.